Next, Mr. Chameleon and the Gold Cigarette Holder Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters in his famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspring. Mr. Chameleon, as you know, is the famous and dreaded detective who frequently uses a disguise to track down a killer, a disguise which at all times is recognized by the audience. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Gold Cigarette Holder Murder Case. Sometimes a quiet manner can be more frightening than violence. And Daisy Howell's manner is both quiet and frightening as she faces her sister, Christine, in the lavish living room of their apartment. And the elder sister, Daisy, is saying, Christine, ever since we were children, you've taken things away from me. When I had something that you wanted, you simply took it. Whether it was clothes or boyfriends or... Or Larry. Don't overlook Larry since you're taking inventory, Daisy. How could I overlook him? I loved Larry. But Larry loved me. You mean he married you? And the marriage didn't even last a year. As soon as you got him, you no longer wanted him. Oh, Daisy, stop being tiresome and get out of my way. I'm going out. Not until you give me back my gold cigarette holder. But, Daisy, it's so ridiculous. Why should you mind my taking the cigarette holder of yours? Because it was a gift from Larry in the days when we were happy. And it's mine, Christine. You're not taking another thing that's mine. But to make such an issue of a cigarette holder... Maybe it's the straw that breaks the camel's back. Why, Daisy, what an unflattering way to refer to yourself. Give me back that holder. I've missed it for months. I didn't realize you had it. Well, I have, and I'm keeping it. I happen to like it. Now get out of my way. Not until you give it to me. (gasps) Christine, you... You slapped me. Yes, I slapped you, Daisy. And I'll do it again if necessary. Christine, you've always made the fatal mistake of thinking that people will take anything from you. Well, they won't. One of these days, my dear sister, you're going to be found with a knife in your back. It is the following noon at Central Police Headquarters that we find Mr. Chameleon in the office of the Commissioner of Police. And the Commissioner has just handed him a photograph, whereupon Mr. Chameleon exclaims, Christine Howell. Don't tell me she's made the front pages again. Uh, She has indeed, Chameleon. She's been murdered. What? Yes, stabbed to death. The report just came in. Her body was found by her aunt, a Mrs. Dennison. Apparently, Christine Howell and her sister Daisy and their aunt and uncle, Mr. and Mrs. Dennison, all lived together at the Chandler Arms. They picked a nice, expensive place. Christine was the darling of cafe society. You want me to go up there, Commissioner? Yes, immediately, Chameleon. Take Dave Arnold with you. Christine Howell's life may have been short, but it was colorful. I have a feeling that her murder may be just as interesting. And not long afterwards, we find Mr. Chameleon with Detective Dave Arnold approaching the fashionable Chandler Arms Apartments. And Mr. Chameleon says abruptly, Wait a second, Dave. I want to take a look at that building. Quite a joint, I'd say, Mr. Chameleon. Pretty high class. Yes, but I suspect that Christine Howell, for all her beauty and social prominence, wasn't exactly high class. Her apartment, or uh, her aunt's apartment, is on the second floor. That must be it there. Her body was found right next to the window. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Well, may not mean it. Dave, look at this. What is it, Mr. Chameleon? A cigarette holder, lying here in the gutter. Hey, it's gold. Yes. 
There's an inscription on it. For Daisy, from Larry. Oh, well, some passerby must have lost it. Uh, yes, maybe, Dave, but I think I'll file this gold cigarette holder away in my pocket for future reference. A few minutes later, Mr. Chameleon and Dave are bending over Christine's lifeless body, while a white-faced, sad-eyed woman hovers in the background. And Mr. Chameleon turns to her and says... Uh, Mrs. Dennison, I understand that you discovered your niece Christine's body lying directly beneath this window. The window is now shut. Was it shut when you found the body? I... I don't recall, Mr. Chameleon. I was so shocked at at seeing her. Mm. I don't blame you, Mrs. Dennison. She was savagely attacked. Stabbed not once, but half a dozen times. (laughs) Mr. Chameleon. I can't stand this. I quite understand. (laughs) Come, let's go into another room. Now, Mrs. Dennison, you say that you heard nothing during the night. Nothing, Mr. Chameleon. Our bedroom, my husband's and mine, is at the end of the hall. This is a very large apartment. And a very magnificent one. Has your niece uh, lived with you for long? We, We really lived with her. Christine was very generous with all of us. All of you? You mean that uh, someone else lives here, too? My other niece, Christine's older sister, Daisy. Did you say Daisy? Uh, Yes, Dave, a very common name. Um, Mrs. Denison, uh, do you know of anyone named Larry? Why, certainly. Larry Wilson. Christine was married to him. They were separated, however. I see. And Larry Wilson had been a friend of Daisy's. Mr. Chameleon... Apparently, you already know a great deal about Christine's and Daisy's private affairs. Not as much as you might think. Did the sisters, your two nieces, get on together? Mrs. Dennison, a murder has been committed. Did Christine and her sister Daisy quarrel? Yes. You heard them quarrel? Yes. When? Last evening. Over Larry Wilson? Partly, yes. Daisy really loved Larry... His marriage to her sister Christine was a terrible mistake. It wasn't very long before Larry asked Christine for his freedom. Was she willing to give it to him? No, Mr. Chameleon. She was afraid Larry would go back to Daisy. Besides... Yes, go on, Mrs. Dennison. I don't know, Mr. Chameleon, but Christine seemed to have some hold on Larry. Some hold that that he couldn't break away from. Well, beauty sometimes has that effect. Christine was a very beautiful girl. Oh, I'm sure it wasn't only that. Mr. Chameleon, I don't know. I tried to look after my two nieces, but even as a child, that there was something wrong with Christine. And Daisy? Oh, Daisy has always been too meek for her own good. And sometimes the meek can be very terrible, Mrs. Dennison. Uh, where is Daisy? Oh, she's in the next room, Mr. Chameleon. I told her you'd want to question her. Oh, thank you, Dave. Uh, Mrs. Dennison, uh, please tell your husband that I'll want to see him too. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Miss Daisy Howell? Oh, oh, oh yes. Uh, you're Mr. Chameleon. I seem to have startled you. Oh, no. No, Mr. Chameleon, not at all. Who do you think could have murdered my sister, Christine? I've no idea, Miss Daisy. I thought you might help me. I suppose that you heard nothing either at the time your sister was murdered, which must have been about 5 a.m. I heard nothing, no. I can't say that you seem heartbroken over your sister's death. I shan't pretend to you, Mr. Chameleon. I didn't like my sister. I'm not surprised, Daisy, considering that Christine not only took Larry Wilson away from you and married him, but later refused to give him his freedom. So you know... Mr. Chameleon, surely you don't think... I'm beginning to think Larry Wilson had excellent reasons for wanting your sister Christine out of the way. Oh, but I did, too. I did, too. Daisy, are you saying that you killed her? No. No, but Larry... Larry wouldn't harm anyone, not even Christine. Well, then who would? Oh, I don't know. I can't imagine. Daisy, your aunt, Mrs. Dennison, seemed to think that Christine had some evil hold over Larry, her husband, so that, uh... He wasn't able to fight for his freedom. I don't know about that either, Mr. Chameleon. All I'm sure of is that Larry Wilson isn't capable of murder. And you can think of no other enemies that your sister might have had. No one who had reason to murder her. No. 
Well, then her husband, Larry Wilson, is still the main suspect. No, wait. There is someone else. That... Only... Oh, he's so pathetic, so hopelessly meek. As I told your aunt, the meek can be very terrible. Who is this man, Daisy? Drew Dennison, Aunt May's husband. You see, Mr. Chameleon, my sister, Christine, thought it would be a lark to make him fall in love with her, so she did, but... But Drew Dennison learned to hate her just as Larry hated her. Christine wouldn't let him go? No. She even got a sort of kick out of our all living in this apartment. And since Christine paid the bills... Your bills too, Daisy? Oh, no. I've had a job for some time. In fact, I was planning to move out of the apartment this week. But Drew Dennison wasn't well, and poor Aunt May, she simply thought Christine was generous. This is a fascinating household, Daisy. Did your aunt uh, suspect that her husband was in love with her niece, Christine? No, Mr. Chameleon. But Christine tormented Drew continually by threatening to tell Aunt May the truth. Your sister was a very sick girl, Daisy. Mentally sick. Very, Mr. Chameleon. She infected us all. Mr. Chameleon, are you going to question my uncle, Drew? Well, you sound as if you didn't want me to. Oh, no. No, I... I mean, I, I, I feel so sorry for him. I'm beginning to feel sorry for all of you, Daisy. But the fact remains that your sister, Christine, was murdered. Dave. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. I've been looking for the knife that was used to murder Christine Howell. No luck so far. Well, keep on searching. Uh, did Mrs. Dennison tell her husband that I want to see him? Uh, he's waiting for you, Mr. Chameleon, right in there. Oh, good. Uh, Dave. Remember, not a word to anyone about that cigarette holder I found outside in the street. I'll remember, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Dennison? Oh, yes. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. My wife said you were here. Uh, I presume you've been talking to our niece, Daisy. That's right. Well? If you mean, did she tell me that you'd been in love with her sister, Christine? Yes. She did. She had no choice. I suppose you think I'm the murderer, Mr. Chameleon, that I killed my wife's niece, but I didn't. I wouldn't have dared hurt Christine. What do you mean you wouldn't have dared? I mean, well, she was a wretched girl. She made me very unhappy, but I've never hurt anyone. Not anyone, Mr. Chameleon. Mr. Dennison, why, under the circumstances, did you go on living here in Christine's apartment? Because... Right now, I'm out of a job, and I'm not well. So you let Christine, this girl whom you'd loved and learned to hate, you let her take care of you and your wife? I had to, Mr. Chameleon. I tell you, I'm not well. Must have been an unbearable situation, Mr. Dennison. Enough to make any man's mind snap. But my mind didn't snap. If anyone killed Christine, it was her husband, Larry Wilson. Mr. Dennison, by casting suspicion on someone else, you're only making yourself look more guilty. But it's true Larry hated Christine... And, and what's he doing here, right now? Here? Larry Wilson is here in this apartment? He came in the back way. Daisy knows he's here. He went straight to Christine's bedroom. Daisy was probably afraid that I'd tell you. Well, I'm very glad that you did, Mr. Dennison. Dave. Yes, Mr. Chameleon. Come along. Well, where are we going? To the murdered girl's bedroom. Must be down this hall. But, Mr. Chameleon... Larry Wilson, her husband, is in there, Dave. Why, I don't know, but I intend to find out. Well, this must be the room. The door's closed. And locked. Larry Wilson, this is the police. Let us in. Mr. Wilson, if you don't open the door, we'll break it down. Who? Who are you? What do you want? I'm Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters. I'd like to ask you what you want, Larry Wilson. You seem to have turned this bedroom into a shambles. Just why did you come here to your murdered wife's bedroom, and what are you looking for? Mr. Chameleon and the gold cigarette holder murder case continues in just a moment. When you're suffering from an ordinary headache, neuritic, or neuralgic pain, you want two things. First, you want something that will give you fast relief, and second, you want something that will give you dependable relief. So listen. People everywhere know that because it's actually ready to go to work in two seconds, Bayer Aspirin provides fast relief. And they know that because it's gentle to the system, it also provides dependable relief. 
The fact is that no other pain reliever can match Bayer Aspirin's record of use by millions of normal people without ill effect. And that means that of all pain relievers, Bayer Aspirin is one you can take with complete confidence. So when you have a headache, don't experiment with drugs that have not been proved by years of successful use. For the two most important kinds of relief, the fast relief you want and the dependable relief you need, do as millions do, be sure, with Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for it by its full name, Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the gold cigarette holder, Murder Case. The savage murder of Christine Howell has revealed the fact that this beautiful girl had meddled viciously in many lives. And now in her disordered bedroom, Mr. Chameleon confronts Larry Wilson, the desperate young man who is married to Christine. And Mr. Chameleon is saying, Larry Wilson, you can hardly stand there and deny that you came to this apartment in an effort to find something. Now, what was it? What were you looking for here in your murdered wife's bedroom? Nothing, Mr. Chameleon. Really, Mr. Wilson? Is that why you've torn the room apart? Because you were looking for nothing? Yes. It's not a very intelligent answer. It will have to do, Mr. Chameleon. You'll never get me to change it. Larry Wilson, how long is it since you and your wife, Christine, separated? About six months. Yet you still had access to this apartment. How'd you get in? Did her sister Daisy let you in? Leave Daisy out of it. She had nothing to do with it. I let myself in. I still have a key to this apartment. So you could have gotten in last night, too. That's right, Mr. Chameleon. I could have gotten in and murdered Christine. Only I didn't. I was home asleep. And I can't prove it. That's very unfortunate for you, Larry Wilson. Are you sure that you don't want to tell me why you were madly searching this room? I've already told you I wasn't searching. Then you must be a naturally destructive man. Come along, Dave. Don't you want to hold this bird for further questioning, Mr. Chameleon? No, Dave. Larry Wilson, if you attempt to leave town, it'll go very hard with you. Mr. Chameleon, do you really think he was looking shh, for... Shh, shh. Here comes Mrs. Dennison, the murdered girl's aunt. Mr. Chameleon, my husband tells me that Larry Wilson is in there in Christine's bedroom. Yes, that's right, Mrs. Dennison. He's turned the place upside down. But why? Why? Well, I have no idea. Have you, Mrs. Dennison? No. Poor Daisy is nearly hysterical. I, I made her lie down and gave her a sedative. Why is she so concerned about Larry Wilson? considering that he threw her over for her younger sister, Christine. Mrs. Dennison, do you believe that a woman uh, goes on loving a man when he uh, turns to someone else? Mr. Chameleon, I understand what you're driving at. Yes, I knew that Drew, my husband, was infatuated with my niece, Christine. But not for long. He quickly turned back to me. You're a very understanding woman. No more so than other women who love their husbands. Christine could make men fall in love with her, but she could never hold them. Mrs. Dennison, what was Larry Wilson searching for in her bedroom? What? What was he looking for in his murdered wife's bedroom? I told you I don't know, Mr. Chameleon. Is it so important? Vitally important in the solving of this case. I'm sorry. I, I can't help you. So am I. And I'm sorry for Larry Wilson's sake. If he wasn't searching for something, then he was behaving like a maniac. And I'm convinced that whoever murdered your niece, Christine, was completely out of their mind at the time they did it. And later that same day, at Central Police Headquarters, we find Mr. Chameleon pacing his office. And he is saying to Detective Dave Arnold, Dave, I've never come across such a strange setup. All of them living in that luxurious apartment, hating each other, yet doing nothing about it. What sort of bond was it that kept them together? What evil hold did that murdered girl, Christine, have on them? They had charge accounts in all the best stores in town, Mr. Chameleon. I know, and the rent alone on that apartment must be terrific. Yet the aunt's husband, Drew Dennison, admitted that he didn't work. Christine had no visible means of support. If you ask me, Christine's husband, Larry Wilson, looks pretty bad. Well, they all had reason for wanting Christine out of the way. There's something else, something that no one's talked about. Dave, did you examine this closely? What, Mr. Chameleon? The gold cigarette holder we found in the street, outside the murdered girl's apartment. Yeah, look at it. Comes apart in the middle. Large space in there. It's empty now. 
Take a sniff at it, Dave. Hmm? Well, uh, I don't smell anything. You don't? Well, maybe my imagination is working overtime. Mr. Chameleon, do you think Larry Wilson was searching for this gold cigarette holder when he turned his wife's bedroom upside down? Maybe. Well, then why didn't you say so? Why didn't you spring it on him? Because I didn't want any of them to know that I had it, Dave. We have no evidence against anyone. Motives, but no evidence. Well, that cigarette holder isn't exactly evidence. No, Dave, but um, their reaction to it might be evidence. I'm going to assume the disguise of a man named, um, I'll say, Bill Borden. A cheap, wisecracking little guy, a bit on the shady side. What are you going to do, Mr. Chameleon? Say you found that gold cigarette holder on the street? Yes, Dave. I have a hunch that um, one of those people of the murdered girl's family wants the cigarette holder so badly they may be ready to kill again. And so, the following day, we find Mr. Chameleon in the disguise of Bill Borden, a flashy middle-aged man. And he and Detective Dave Arnold are approaching the apartment where Christine Howell, the murdered girl, lived with her strange dependents. And Mr. Chameleon is saying... All right, Dave. Remember, in five minutes flat, let yourself in the back door of that apartment. Mr. Chameleon, I don't like the idea of your being in there alone. Now, wait until you're sure that they're all in the living room with me, and then I may need you. I'll be there. Good luck, Mr. Chameleon. I'll need it, Dave. If this disguise fails, it may be a long time before we catch Christine Howell's murderer. And while Detective Dave Arnold slips down the corridor and out of sight, Mr. Chameleon steps forward and rings the doorbell. And when Daisy Howell opens the door, Mr. Chameleon speaks in the voice of Bill Borden, his disguise. How do you do, miss? I'll bet you're Christine Howell's sister, Daisy. You're pretty, just like she was. I used to see her picture in the papers. Come in. You're Mr. Borden, I suppose? That's me, Bill Borden. I take it that you uh, got my message. Yes, my aunt, Mrs. Dennison, said you phoned. They're all in the living room. I hope I'm not uh, inconveniencing you good people, but... Uh... I thought the sooner I saw you, the better. Yes. Here we are. This is my aunt, Mrs. Dennison, my Uncle Drew Dennison, and Mr. Larry Wilson. This is Mr. Borden. How do you do? How do you do? How do you do? Bill do? Borden at your service. And believe me, folks, I am in a position to do you a service. Meaning what, Mr. Borden? Mr. Dennison, I'll tell you. I read in all the newspapers about this murder of your wife's niece. Uh, that... Murder was quite a nasty job. Get to the point, Mr. Borden. Easy, Mr. Larry Wilson. I'll get to the point in my own good time. What do you want with us? I uh, just thought you might be interested in a gold cigarette holder. A gold cigarette holder? That's right, Miss Daisy. I read in the papers that the murdered girl's sister was named Daisy. And this gold cigarette holder, uh, it says on it, for Daisy. From Larry. Where is that cigarette holder? Where'd you find it? In the street, outside Mr. Dennison, lying in the gutter. It uh, wasn't until I read about the murder that I realized there might be some connection between the two. Some connection between a, a gold cigarette holder and my niece Christine's murder? You catch on very quick, Mrs. Dennison. And uh, uh, why should this cigarette holder, why should it be so important? Because, Mr. Dennison, it's a mighty peculiar holder. Got a little space inside. Kind of a secret compartment where you can carry things. Let's see it. No. No, Larry Wilson. That cigarette holder is tucked away in my pocket. Snug as a bug in a rug. And no one is going to lay a finger on it. Unless... Unless what? Unless they pay for it. Oh, so this is blackmail. No. I wouldn't call it that, Larry Wilson. But like uh, anyone else, I can use an extra buck. We won't give you a cent. No. The police would be mighty interested in what's uh, hidden inside this gold cigarette holder. Give it to me. Ah, Mr. Dennison. You'd better give it to us, Mr. Borden. Look, don't crowd me. You... Hey, what are you going to do to me, anyhow? Give us that cigarette holder, you dirty blackmailer. Give it to me or I'll... Oh, you'll what, Mr. Dennison? Mr. Chameleon. 
You're Mr. Chameleon. Yes, I'm Chameleon in disguise. Dave, come in. Put your hands up, everyone. So, this was a trick, Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Mr. Dennison, it was a trick. I had a feeling that gold cigarette holder was somehow connected with Christine Howell's murder. She used that holder to carry narcotics in, didn't she? The poor wretches who paid her so well. That was the source of her handsome income, and you and Laddie Wilson both helped her. No, no. Drew, tell him the truth. All right, Mr. Dennison, what is the truth? The truth is, Mr. Chameleon, that Christine tricked us both. We didn't know we were helping her peddle dope. But when we tried to get rid of her, she threatened to tell the police that we were the ones who were selling narcotics. She even put our names on a slip of paper and concealed it inside the cigarette holder. So if the holder was ever confiscated, we'd look guilty. She told you that, Mr. Dennison. Yes, yes, she did, Mr. Chameleon. That's why Larry was frantically searching her room, looking for that holder. She lied, just to torment you further. Your names were not in the holder. It was empty. Oh, that wretched girl, that wicked girl. So wicked that you had to kill her, Mr. Dennison. No, no, Mr. Chameleon. It was I who killed my niece, Christine. You? Aunt May. Yes, I. Why did you kill her, Mrs. Dennison? <laughs> because Drew, my poor husband, finally told me the whole story about the terrible hold Christine had on him. So that night, I, I waited for her. I demanded the gold cigarette holder from her. She only laughed at me. So I, I stabbed her. But before she died, she managed to throw the holder out of the window. Oh, May, my poor dear. <laughs> oh, it's all right, Drew. I'm, I'm glad it's over. I think Mr. Chameleon suspected me from the beginning. Well, I wasn't sure, Mrs. Dennison, whether it was you or your husband. Sometimes it's difficult to be a cop, Mrs. Dennison. You had great provocation for hating your niece. But no provocation is an excuse for killing. So I must arrest you for the murder of Christine Howell. And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. In response to many requests from mothers, genuine Bayer aspirin has been made available in a new children's size tablet. A tablet which now enables you to conveniently give your children the proper dosage as prescribed by your doctor. You see, each of these new tablets contains only half the amount of the regular size Bayer aspirin tablet you take. Thus, to give your child full dosage, you need use only one of these tablets. Because they are uncolored and unflavored, they cannot be mistaken for candy. A new children's size Bayer aspirin, like regular size Bayer aspirin, may be used with utmost confidence. For the fact that doctors prescribe Bayer aspirin's single active ingredient even for the smallest children shows how gentle and dependable it is. The bottle and carton are plainly marked, children's size Bayer aspirin, 30 tablets for 25 cents. Listen next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Engagement Ring Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Marie Baumer, based on the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert. It is directed by Richard Leonard, with music by Victor Arden. Your announcer is Howard Clayton. You may have trouble knowing if your teeth are still as white and bright as they used to be, for improper cleaning causes them to become dingy gradually. But your friends notice it, for it robs you of charm. That's why it's important to use a dentifrice that does more than fight tooth decay. What you need is a dentifrice that also whitens and brightens your teeth, gets them really clean. And no dentifrice cleans teeth like powder. Try Dr. Lyon's tooth powder. And if you don't agree that it makes your teeth cleaner than your present dentifrice, whitens and brightens them so your smile sparkles with its old-time luster, your money will be refunded. Get either regular or ammoniated Dr. Lyon's tooth powder. Listen for Mr. Chameleon in The Engagement Ring Murder Case next Wednesday night at this time. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. Mm -hmm.